Rome's initial involvement in Greece occurred in 215 BCE during the Second Punic War. Hannibal Barca, the Carthaginian general, sought to divert Roman forces and formed an alliance with King Philip V of Macedon, leading to the onset of the First Macedonian War from 215 to 205 BCE. Rome deployed troops to Greece and, in collaboration with various Greek city-states, worked to thwart Macedonian attempts to dominate the peninsula over the ensuing decade. Despite their prolonged efforts, the Macedonian kings remained steadfast in their ambition to regain control over Greece. In 200 BCE, Philip forged an alliance with King Antiochus III of the Seleucid Empire, a successor state of Alexander the Great's empire. In response, Rome declared war, marking the commencement of the Second Macedonian War from 200 to 196 BCE. The conflict culminated in Rome's victory at the Battle of Cynocephaly in 197 BCE, resulting in the defeat of Philip V. Philip passed away in 179 BCE, and his son Perseus assumed leadership, renewing Macedonian endeavors to conquer Greece. In the face of Perseus's ambitions, Rome formed an alliance with Pergamum, leading to the Third Macedonian War from 171 to 167 BCE. This alliance aimed to resist Perseus's expansionist goals and maintain stability in the region. In the initial stages of the conflict, the Roman forces faced setbacks in Greece. Their troops, initially landing on the east coast of Illyria, marched into Macedon only to suffer defeat in three separate campaigns from 171 to 170 BCE. The turning point came in 168 BCE when Rome dispatched the capable commander Lucius Emilius Paulus, along with reinforcements, to take charge. Upon assuming command, Paulus prioritized retraining his exhausted and undisciplined army. In June 168 BCE, he initiated a strategic plan reminiscent of a hammer and anvil battle. As part of a tactical decoy, the Roman fleet stationed in the Gulf of Thessalonica possibly aimed to disrupt the Macedonian supply line. The Roman army under Paulus reached the Elpius River with intentions to attack Perseus's camp. Paulus, having retrained his forces thoroughly and utilizing local guides, dispatched a small contingent along a path at the base of Mount Olympus to flank Perseus from the northwest. Upon learning of this maneuver, Perseus chose not to engage in battle and swiftly evacuated his camp, heading southward. Paulus, determined not to let the Macedonian king escape, regrouped his forces at Deme and pursued Perseus. The pursuit culminated outside Pydna, a city situated on the Lucas River. Paulus strategically set up his camp at the foothills of Mount Olocris, overlooking the Macedonian encampment. With a force comprising 25,000 infantry and 34 elephants, Paulus prepared for the decisive confrontation. Interestingly, Perseus had an opportunity to defeat the Romans without engaging in battle by cutting off their supply lines. However, both sides opted to prepare for a decisive encounter, setting the stage for the upcoming clash. During the night of June 21, 168 BCE, a lunar eclipse occurred, and one of the Roman officer had foreseen this celestial event. Interpreting it as a favorable omen from the gods, signaling their support for the Romans, Lucius Emilius Paulus decided to honor the gods by conducting a sacrificial ritual involving oxen and heifers. In contrast, the Macedonians perceived the eclipse differently, viewing it as a harbinger of misfortune and defeat. Their response involved shouting at the moon, urging its return, as they believed the celestial occurrence foretold an ominous fate for them in the upcoming conflict. On the afternoon of June 22, 168 BCE, both warring factions observed a temporary truce to facilitate the drawing of water from the Lucas. Unfortunately, a misunderstanding unfolded, triggering a sudden scramble for weapons. Seizing the opportunity, Perseus swiftly organized his forces and successfully crossed the Lucas. At the initiation of the conflict, the Macedonians boasted a total of 43,000 soldiers, with over 20,000 phalangites among them. The cavalry forces were approximately evenly matched, with around 4,000 Macedonians and Thracians facing off against roughly 3,400 Romans and their allies. However, as the battle approached, the Macedonian army's numbers had diminished to around 30,000. 
For instance, before the engagement, Perseus had dispatched 8,000 Macedonians to guard against the Roman fleet threatening his rear. This contingent included 2,000 peltas, 5,000 phalangites, and 1,000 cavalry. On the Roman side, their forces numbered around 27,000 men, potentially reaching up to 37,000. Among them, 22,000 to 34,000 constituted infantry, consisting of Romans, Italians, and allies hailing from Greece, Numidia, Liguria, and possibly Hispania. The stage was set for a decisive confrontation between the Macedonian and Roman armies. Both armies adopted their customary formations for the impending battle. The Roman forces positioned their two legions at the center, flanked by allied Latin, Italian, and Greek infantry. The cavalry took positions on the wings, and on the Roman right, an additional force of 22 elephants was included. On the Macedonian side, the phalanx occupied the central position in their lineup. To the left of the phalanx, the elite guard, numbering 3,000 strong, was strategically positioned. The flanks of the phalanx were guarded by lighter peltas, mercenaries, and Thracian infantry. It is likely that the Macedonian cavalry was distributed on both flanks, with a more formidable presence on the Macedonian right, where Perseus led the heavy cavalry, including his elite sacred squadron, and the Thracian Adrysian cavalry were deployed. However, alternative accounts suggest that the cavalry did not actively participate in the battle due to a strike against Perseus by the nobles. As the clock approached 3 p.m., the two formidable armies found themselves on the brink of a momentous clash. The Macedonians, initiating the engagement, advanced towards the Romans, positioning themselves a short distance from the Roman camp. Lucius Emilius Paulus, the Roman commander, later confessed that the sight of the approaching Macedonian phalanx stirred a mix of alarm and astonishment within him. The Roman allies, determined to confront the menacing phalanx, launched attempts to beat down the enemy pikes or hack off their razor-sharp points. However, their efforts met with limited success, and a sense of despair began to permeate the ranks of the Roman allies. One officer, overwhelmed by impotent fury, even resorted to tearing his garments in frustration. Another, in an act of desperation, seized his unit's standard and flung it into the midst of the advancing enemy. This bold move prompted his men to launch a desperate charge to recapture the standard, resulting in fierce combat that, despite inflicting some casualties, ended in the Roman allies being repelled. Facing the formidable Macedonian phalanx, and unable to penetrate the dense forest of pikes, the Romans executed a planned retreat over the uneven terrain. This strategic withdrawal allowed them to regroup and reassess their approach to the relentless Macedonian advance. The battlefield, now a tumultuous scene of clashes and strategic maneuvers, set the stage for the unfolding drama of the Battle of Pydna. As the Macedonian phalanx advanced, the terrain gradually shifted, becoming more uneven as it approached the foothills. This change in topography disrupted the cohesion of the phalanx, forcing it to navigate the challenging landscape. Lucius Emilius Paulus, keenly aware of the opportunity presented by the shifting ground, seized the moment to exploit openings in the Macedonian line. Recognizing the vulnerability of the Macedonian flanks as the phalanx struggled over the rough terrain, Paulus strategically inserted his troops and war elephants into these exposed areas. With precision and determination, the Romans launched a fierce assault on the phalangites, engaging them at close quarters. The Romans, equipped with longer swords and heavier shields, found an advantage over their Macedonian counterparts wielding the copies and lighter shields. In the midst of the tumultuous battle, the Romans pressed on, exploiting the vulnerabilities in the Macedonian line with tactical precision. The clash intensified, and the Romans' superior weaponry and shield design began to tip the scales in their favor. The phalangites, facing the onslaught on their exposed flanks, struggled to maintain their formation against the relentless Roman assault. Simultaneously, the Roman right, having successfully routed the Macedonian left, reinforced the attack. The combined force of the Roman legions, allies, and war elephants surged forward, further disorienting the Macedonian phalanx. 
the battle had turned decisively in favor of the Romans as they continued their assault on the weakened and disarrayed Macedonian forces. The uneven ground, initially a challenge for both armies, now played to the advantage of the Romans. The Battle of Pydna had reached a critical turning point, and the momentum was firmly in favor of the resolute Roman forces. As the tide of battle unmistakably shifted in favor of the Romans, the Macedonian king, Perseus, discerning the dire situation, made a hasty retreat with his cavalry from the Macedonian right. According to Plutarch, the Macedonian cavalry, including Perseus, had yet to fully engage in the battle. The fleeing king and his cavalry faced accusations of cowardice from the surviving Macedonian infantry, adding an air of disgrace to their retreat. Posidonius offered an alternative account, suggesting that Perseus had been injured by enemy missiles early in the battle and had been taken to the safety of the city of Pydna. Meanwhile, the elite 3,000-strong Macedonian guard, unwavering in their loyalty, fought fiercely to the death on the battlefield. The remaining Macedonian forces, witnessing their king's retreat and the devastating turn of events, now faced the relentless onslaught of the Roman forces. In the ensuing chaos, nearly 11,000 Macedonians found themselves captured, a testament to the overwhelming success of the Roman offensive. Livy, drawing from various sources, reported a staggering figure of up to 20,000 Macedonian dead. The actual battle itself endured for approximately an hour, but the pursuit that followed in the aftermath, marked by bloodshed and chaos, persisted until nightfall. Conflicting reports hinted at the possibility of a tactical error or confusion on the part of the Macedonian king, resulting in a detachment of 10,000 Macedonians being cut off from the main engagement and failing to participate in the decisive clash. The Battle of Pydna, characterized by its swift and impactful course, ultimately concluded with the resounding victory of the Romans, leaving the Macedonian forces in disarray and Perseus facing accusations of cowardice. The Battle of Pydna is often viewed as a triumph of the Roman legion's adaptability over the rigidity of the Macedonian phalanx. However, contemporary assessments indicate that the defeat was primarily a consequence of Perseus's command failure and the unconventional stance of the Sacred Squadron, which refrained from engaging the enemy. Modern analyzes suggest that the outcome can be attributed to factors such as troop training levels, as exemplified by the 3000 Agamapeltas who demonstrated greater cohesion than the regular phalanx. This emphasizes the crucial role of troop training in influencing both the resilience of the pike phalanx in frontal assaults and the effectiveness of infantry attempting to breach the pike wall. While the Battle of Pydna was not the conclusive conflict between the Roman Republic and Macedon, it proved to be the decisive blow that shattered the backbone of Macedonian power. This pivotal engagement and its subsequent political repercussions effectively signaled the end of Macedonian independence, although formal annexation by Rome would occur in the years that followed. The aftermath of the battle had profound political implications, marking a turning point in Macedonian history. In the aftermath of the defeat, Perseus, recognizing the futility of further resistance, surrendered to Lucius Emilius Paulus. He was subsequently paraded in chains through the streets of Rome in a triumphant display of Roman victory. Perseus, once the proud ruler of Macedon, found himself imprisoned. The Macedonian kingdom underwent a radical transformation. It was dissolved, and a new political order emerged, replacing the monarchy with four republics. However, these newly formed republics faced stringent restrictions on interaction and trade with each other. Over time, even these republics were dissolved, and Macedonia was eventually absorbed into the Roman Empire as a Roman province. The Battle of Pydna and its aftermath marked the end of an era for Macedon, as it transitioned from a once powerful kingdom to a constituent part of the expanding Roman dominion.